did you know anyone else who had done it before you? Hmm. Good question. Um, not really. Uh, no, not that I, I mean, like, I guess like people from high school and like had tried other things like, you know, it's like, like there was, I went to camp with this guy who was like a few years older than me and he was in the band um, from the, uh, it was this band that was like very briefly, moderately successful in like 2013 called Time Flies. Have you ever heard oh, of that? Oh, I know Time Flies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They, they did so the, they, uh, the Time Flies Tuesdays, like the freestyles. Yes, 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 yes. So like in my mind, that was like, Oh, like that, like that, that was the only thing I knew. And that guy was like, I met him like three times in my life. You know, like I didn't really, I, I mean, I guess if I thought hard, maybe I would like think of other people, but definitely not comedy. And the people I know who had like been successful in any form of entertainment were like so distant from me um, that, yeah, I, I was pretty going into it pretty blind. Hi, this is Kyle Gordon. And this is my golden hour. Hi. It's good. Hi. Hey. Hi, my name is Molly Walsh. Hi, I'm Becca Peasy. Hi, I'm Jinx Self. And this is my golden hour. 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 Whoa. How are you, man? Oh, man, not too bad. It's been a crazy couple of days. Uh, my girlfriend and I just drove back up from Florida. Her car broke down in South Carolina, so I got to return the rental car today. It's just a crazy craziness, but we, we, we figured everything out. Now, what part of Florida are we talking? Are we talking hit country or party country? Uh, old people country. It was like uh, near Sarasota. Oh, Sarasota. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's like her parents like uh condo. Uh so yeah, it was like off the coast of Sarasota. So a lot of quiet old quiet old community. <laughs> a lot of wrinkles. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, um and my mom is moving down there and uh this winter she's gonna be spending all her time in Naples. And so it's like kind of similar to Sarasota, but it's interesting. I think we kind of like grew up in similar neighborhoods, at least based on your content. It, it seems like this is the age where everyone's parents like move out of their childhood homes and go to Florida. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, definitely my grandparents have done that. My parents are like oddly committed to like not doing that because they're like, we're not going to do what our parents did, but we'll see how that goes in the next few years. My dad just so, turned 60. So or he's turning 60. Oh, word. So they're still in Westchester County. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, dude, I'm Connor, man. Great to meet you. You as well. Thanks. Dude, uh, it's just so interesting. So when I had DM'd you initially, I just kept seeing your videos pop up. And I was like, yo, this is like, this dude is actually dead ass hilarious. Like, this dude is <laughs> fucking funny. And um, I got to be honest, I'm like a tough laugh. So I've been running this podcast forever. But it's rarely I find something I think is like super fucking funny. And then it seems like since I DM'd you until now, things have just gone like this for you. Yeah, it's been pretty crazy. Um, yeah, it's been wild. Uh, before we move on, can you just give a quick synopsis of who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So my name is Kyle Gordon. I'm a comedian based in New York, and I've been doing comedy, live comedy for a for a while for many many years and that was kind of my grind pre-pandemic and then since the pandemic really literally since november or end of november so post thanksgiving 2020 i've just been doing like a lot of content and comedy um on tiktok and instagram and that's kind of blown up and probably why i'm here so <laughs> Now, now, what was your content wave like before TikTok? Were you doing YouTube? I saw some stuff on YouTube, like you had a podcast. Yeah, so before TikTok, before the pandemic, um, I had some videos on YouTube. I had a podcast, um, which was really fun, but it wasn't strictly comedy. And it wasn't, it was um, like a music podcast that I kind of did for fun with my 
friend Louie, and uh, that was really fun. But I mean, most of what I was doing was like live comedy. Um, and kind of right before the pandemic, I had just started being like, I need to create more online content. Um, and I was trying to make stuff for YouTube, but you know, I don't know shit about shit when it comes to filming stuff and editing. And so it was always very labor intensive. I needed people's help. I needed, um, and I had this idea in my mind that it needed to be of a higher, like professional quality in terms of like camera work and all that stuff and editing. So it just took a lot of time and I didn't get to make a ton of content because it just took a lot of time. And so sort of the one of the blessings of the pandemic and TikTok is that, you know, I can do everything all by myself. I'm kind of changing gears here. But yeah, uh, the um, you know, now I can do everything all by myself. I do it on my phone. It doesn't take a lot of technical expertise on the filming and editing side. So um, that was kind of my path. Yeah, dude, I'm making a movie right now in Boston. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And so, dude, it's just like this thing's taking me a fucking year. I'm like, holy shit, it would be so nice right. to just rip content out. Right, right. I hear you. I totally hear you. But I, I think I had seen a couple of your videos that had like higher production quality. Like that baseball one had like this deep tracking shot in it, didn't it? Yep. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, good, good, good job noticing that. Yeah. So, uh, my, that one was, um, my friend, my good friend, Shane, uh, if you're listening, he's at handled entertainment on, um, on TikTok and Instagram, but he, he, he's an old, old friend. Um, and he, you know, he does, he does, he shoots stuff. He does film stuff like professionally. And so he hit me up and was like, Hey, if you ever want to like make something with me, like, let's do it. Like, you know, you've got ideas. I'll just shoot it for you and edit it for you. Um, and so in that case, I was like, fuck yeah. Like, if you want to come and help me do it, that'd be awesome. Cause I have certain ideas that would be much better with a higher production value. Um, but I don't, I don't have to rely on that anymore. If people want to hit me up and help me, like, I'm not going to say no, but, um, you know, that, that was kind of, that was kind of what happened there. Um, and he helped me, um, he helped me with that one. And I have this other character, DJ crazy times. And he helped me do a few of those videos, which were like a higher production value. Um, trying to think of any else, but those were, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Now, did you always have the idea to just like stick to character stuff with comedy? I've never seen one of your standup shows. I'd love to get to New York and see one, but was that always your idea? Like, Dan, there isn't really anyone on TikTok kind of slamming good character content. Yeah. So So no, it wasn't, that was, that wasn't really the thinking. So I have, even in my live show, um, that's what I do. Um, so a lot of the characters on TikTok were taken over or or were transported over from stuff I used to do live. So my live show is actually, um, it's, it's more musical. Um, and so I do a lot of musical characters. So, uh, I do like kind of an emo kid. I do an angry Irish guy, like an Irish song. I do like a Brazilian jazz guy, which I posted on TikTok. Um, and that's my live show. So, um, what I do on TikTok is very much a continuation of, and like an expansion on what I was doing live. Um, and how I came to it in terms of live stuff. I mean, that's just like my taste, you know, that's That's always what I just, yeah, that's just what I like. It's what makes me laugh. It's what I enjoy doing. It's what I think I'm best at, you know, like, I think I'm really actually, I'm much funnier when I'm not being me, <laughs> you know, <So> you. <laughs> that's, that's just my style. You know, some people are the opposite, you know, like a lot of standups. Um, that's just not my, you know, those are really aren't my strengths. I don't think so. Now, have you always had the, uh, like the ability to mimic people pretty easily since you were young? Like it's always coming pretty quick. Um, yeah, I mean, I was always like the funny guy. Um, like I was, you know, like just, that was who I was and it always has kind of been my identity. But um, yeah, when I, I wouldn't call it like mimicry because like, I'm actually not very good at like impressions, for example. Um, I mean, I could do like broad impressions, like cartoony impressions, but not like, you know, I'm not an impressionist by any stretch. So I guess, um, I guess just when I think about the world and like, think about what's funny, I think about things through the lens of different characters. So I guess, if I have any, if I can kind of pinpoint what my strengths are, it's like identifying maybe just like 
identifying unique, funny characters that exist in the world or exist in media and like kind of boiling it down, it down to its essence. I think that's probably what my strength, strength is. Well, where did the Russian barber come from? Did you have one? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, a hundred percent. Like, so I grew up, yeah, strictly going to Russian barbers. And uh, yeah, in Boston, you probably, I don't know if you have them too. It's funny. No, I, I got that Dominican that, barber, baby. Dominican barber. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I grew up, you know, in the New York, in the New York area. And, um, and yeah, I guess I, I didn't realize it's kind of a regional thing, but um, yeah, no. So yeah, I grew up only going to Russian barbers. <laughs> and they're just fucking psychos. <laughs> oh, they're hilarious. I mean, the ones when I was a kid were like quieter, but like, but then also like my, so it's funny, like the most recent one I posted of the Russian barber, I've done like two videos. Um, so the accent and kind of, uh, it, I had, um, one of my best friends from college, who was also my freshman roommate, his name was Guram, and I drop his name in the video. I do a lot of like Easter egg name drops for like friends right. of mine from home. Um, but uh, yeah, he was from the Georgian Republic, which is like right south of Russia. And so uh, his that that accent is pretty much I'm doing him. <laughs> Word. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, if you were to, if you were to give me your most favorite character comedian of all time. Who is it? If we have the same answer here, then I think this is destiny that we're supposed to be boys. <laughs> character comedian. I mean, m my favorite, I think the funniest person of all time. And I think a lot of what he does is characters in a sense, but is Chris Farley. I mean, that's oh, I thought you were going to say Chris Lilly. I was like, oh, uh, Chris Lilly. I mean, I think Chris Lilly is great. Uh, he yeah he's more strictly like character is that your favorite for like strictly characters yeah i mean dude his characters are absurd no yeah chris, I think he's, chris he's, farley's he's, great though dude Do, have you ever seen um almost heroes i actually never saw that one that's the one i i haven't actually seen that's the one with what's his name from um friends it's um, with uh matthew perry Handler. matthew perry matthew, yeah, yeah 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 and he uh Dude, talk about production value in that movie. Like, I think they shot it in, like, three nights. But, right, um, right, right. <laughs> dude, he is so funny out. in that movie. You got to see it. All right, yeah. That, I mean, that's uh, – yeah, I have to add that to my Chris Farley watching catalog. I haven't seen that one, so. So what What are your favorites from him? Oh, I mean, um, I mean, actually, my favorite thing he ever did, did was a sketch on SNL called The Chris Farley Show. Um, and he, he kind of, you know, cause he usually plays these massive in terms of energy characters. Um, and he has this, and on that one, he just plays what is, I guess, supposed to be like a cartoonish exaggerated version of himself. And he just gets very, very nervous to interview celebrities. And he just, you know, does kind of these like, uh, really self-effacing, um, really like fidgety, nervous interviews. Um, and they're just amazing. I recommend if anyone hasn't seen it, check out the Chris Farley show from, from SNL. Yeah, dude, I found with a lot of his stuff, I mean, obviously his like famous sketches are like down by the river and then mm -hmm. some of the stuff he was doing with Sandler on stage, but I've found like a lot of his unpopular sketches are some of the funnier ones. Yeah. Yeah, I, totally. I mean, he just was, I just think he's like the funniest person ever. So. Um, and, I, and when I was a kid, I would just like, con that was one impression I would always do <laughs> as a kid. So yeah, I've, I've, I thought he was the best forever. Yeah. Are, are you a big, uh, like Billy Madison fan and happy Madison production type fan? Um, I mean, yeah, I grew up with Billy Madison and happy Gilmore. Um, so I love those movies. I mean, I can't necessarily vouch for the, uh, the newer ones, but, um, come on, you don't like little Nicky. I actually saw that for the first time pretty recently. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe if I'd seen it as a kid, I'd look back on it more fond fondly, but um, yeah, not, I, I'll say I like some of his other movies better, but, but I mean, those movies are really fun. Um, and I just respect, he clearly just like doesn't give a fuck and just wants to have fun making movies. So I respect the fuck out of that. Yeah. He's a production G just like whips them out. Yep. 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 Yeah. Um, 
huge Billy Madison fan, huge Happy Gilmore fan. Um, did you like The Wedding Singer? Yeah, The Wedding Singer, I, I, I liked. I thought that was good. I haven't seen it in a long time, but yeah, that was that's a fun one too. All right, so so tell me here, like you, you're leaving school, right? It was Denison. Yeah. Yep. Went to Denison. Yep. Is it like a tough conversation for you to have with like your parents, or your family? Like, hey, I think I want to move to New York and do comedy full time, or is everyone like, yeah, it's probably what you should do? So, um, I so that's what I, right at the end of college, like summer going into senior year. Um, that's when I started doing like open mics in Columbus, Ohio. So that's when I started and I was like, oh, you know, I just kind of realized that like it's pop, you know, I could maybe give it a shot. Um, and yeah, no, my parents were, I mean, they just, they weren't like supportive in terms, I mean, they, they, they were supportive in terms of, they never gave me a hard time about it. Like, you know, it's like, they were like, if you can pay your own way and you want to figure it out then go for it um i i was it's funny like i actually was talking to my mom about this recently because um you know things things have you know i i'm i'm just now kind of able to support myself um just on the comedy i mean i always had to have like other jobs that's what i mean by that but um i i, I like kind of recently had a conversation with my mom i was like you know, when I started this, like, how did you know I wouldn't suck? You know what I mean? Like, you don't know that maybe I'm, you know, I want to try comedy, but how do you know that I'm not really bad at this? You know, like, uh, and she was pretty much like, well, yeah, I guess if we, you know, saw that you really sucked, we would have said something, but I don't know. They just kind of let me do my thing. Uh, and I'm very grateful for that because they they never really were up in my business um you know they were like if you're gonna do it then just go do it and work hard and yeah did you know anyone else who had done it before you hmm good question um not really uh no not that i I mean, like, I guess, like, people from high school and, like, had tried other things, like, you know, it's like, like, there was, I went to camp with this guy who was, like, a few years older than me, and he was in the band um, from, the, uh, it was this band that was, like, very briefly, moderately successful in, like, 2013 called time flies have you ever heard oh of i know that? time flies <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. they, they did so the, they, uh, the time flies tuesdays like the freestyles yes, yes 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 so like in my mind that was like oh like that like that and that was the only thing i knew and that guy was like i met him like three times in my life you know like i didn't really i i mean i guess if i thought hard maybe i would like think of other people but definitely not comedy and the people i know who had like been successful in any form of entertainment were like so distant from me um, that, yeah, I, I was pretty going into it pretty blind. What was his name? Cal? Cal. Yep. Cal went to my summer camp. So Wait. yeah, but I mean, I didn't really know him. But. Was that one? Of, and you could totally tell me if I'm wrong here. That, was that one of those all Jewish summer camps? It was, I mean, it was like one of those that's like mostly Jewish, but. Camp like, Micah? No, it was called Camp Kenwood. Kenwood. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you picked up some great characters at summer camp, man. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, the the kid that's no fun, which is like my most popular character, is like very much based a lot on like kids that I would see and interact with at summer camp. Like, because that's just a mecca of like little spoiled brats who <laughs> you know like want throw a hissy fit. Now, so you make the shift to New York. Are are you like? The first thing you do when you like move to New York, do you get like a corporate suck bag job kind of and just try to figure it out? Or like, what are your, what are your initial steps? Yeah. So, so my path in New York is like, I moved to New York. Um, I initially was bartend. I had a lot of jobs. So I first started bartending then I, and I had sort of like a, 
I mean, I had many different jobs at one time. So I was like bartending. Um, and then I was actually like a fry cook in like, uh, uh, I was a fry cook. Um, and then I got, uh, I got, uh, promoted to grill. That was a, a, a huge moment for me. Um, but then also I, I, uh, no, at the same time, I kind of had like an internship at like a tech company. Then I also was, um, like an office manager for a music PR company. Um, then I quit all those and was kind of like a publicist. And it was like a, essentially what I was, was like, I worked, um, there was a, a company in LA that kind of worked with like Z-list celebrities, no offense to any of those people, but uh, they, you know, like Disney stars and like people like that. Um, and when they would come out to New York, I would essentially like babysit them on their like photo shoots and red carpets. Um, and so really? I did that for, yeah, that was pretty. What was that like? That was very eye-opening in just in terms of like how sort of that industry works and like the publicity side of it. Um, just in, and, and, uh, it made me realize like, I definitely do not want to like work in the entertainment industry if I'm not going to be like a creative. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was pretty, I really didn't really like it. I mean, most of the people I worked with were really nice. Um, but like, I mean, I've been to like a million fashion shows now. It's just like, it was not for me. Uh, and, um, and I guess, so to, to if people are listening, so what I learned, the biggest thing is that, and it seems obvious now, but like any press you get, you have to ask for it. You know, there, there really aren't many people in a position where, or if you're going to get a substantial amount of press, like, um, you know, like from big outlets, like, you know, you have a publicist who reach out, reaches out to them and like asks for interviews and all that stuff. And I don't have that right now, any of that, just so people know, but like, you know, uh, the idea that there are these writers like combing new talent to see who is and way reach out to them. Um, that really is very in that's mostly not the case. Um, and so yeah, I spent dude, most I'll, of my I'll time. Be, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'll be honest with you, dude. Like I have had a handful of like pretty big politicians and pretty big public figures from Boston. So I talk to PR people and press people all the time. Right. And they, and a lot of them have to act a certain way and they like to have to treat you kind of like you're a robot. Even it's right. like, you're like, yo, shut up and treat me like a human. But at the same time, you're like, okay, <laughs> I understand you're like just trying to protect your client here. I get it. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah. It's, it's very, yeah, it's wild. Um, so just like getting a peek behind the curtain in that way was very eye opening for me, just because, again, I, like I said, I didn't know anything about the kind of nitty gritty behind the scenes inside baseball stuff of how the entertainment industry worked. So it was that was helpful. Now, how long were you at that job for the publicist? That was about a year, uh, a little under a year. And then after that, I got like a. a more corporate job doing like a customer service for like a tech company. And I did that until July of this past year. Now, are you this whole time, are you enjoying these jobs or are you just using it as a means so you can do comedy in the night? Yeah, definitely just a means to be able to support myself while I'm doing comedy. Um, I mean, like none of them were like miserable. I mean, I really didn't like to publish this job, but like, you know, I didn't have any job that was like horrible, horrible. Now, with that being said, are you like just hitting comedy clubs in the night? Are you like linking up with other creators? Uh, like back then? Yeah. Yeah. When you're so, grinding, you're in grind mode. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So in grind mode, my path was I, I so I came to the city and I mostly just started doing improv. Um, and so I was doing tons and tons of improv and then I started kind of found, there is like a little scene in New York for like character stuff that was actually just kind of, kind of starting to bubble up. And I didn't even know characters were like a thing you could do. Um, and so that's when I kind of started to do that, but like 
a lot of the, the I mean, I don't want to talk too much shit because like a lot of them are really nice people and, and a lot of them are very, very, very funny. But like I thought a lot of the character um, kind of uh, the like quote unquote like capital C character scene was kind of based around like in New York and this is going to be kind of inside baseball, but like it was very much based at these improv theaters and it was kind of meant to be for an audience that like was there to see characters and it was um I just like didn't think it was I thought there were like too many rules and it wasn't super accessible I thought to like a normal audience that like maybe had doesn't know what like isn't very comedy literate or like doesn't see a lot of comedy shows so my thing was I wanted to do something I wanted my goal was always I want to be able to be booked as Kyle Gordon on a stand up show where everyone else is just doing normal stand up and I can go up and do my thing that's like character based and a normal person who's never seen comedy can get and get what I'm doing and laugh. And so that was kind of my goal. So a few years ago, I started like really grinding, trying to get booked on shows. Um, you did one up in Boston, right? You do Boston Comedy Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was with so that was with uh, this is that was kind of an in between thing. So while I was kind of doing improv and before I was really grinding like hard doing like shows, like kind of more stand up shows, um, I had this like pop punk parody band. I had a full band, um, <laughs> and we did uh, yeah Boston Comedy Festival, um, which was really fun. And that was kind of a hybrid thing, and and so that was kind of doing the band i really enjoyed that but i wanted more control <laughs> for one thing and i wanted it to just be me and i wanted to do multiple characters not just the one character um per show and um so that's that was kind of the transitional thing okay so you're at the point now where you're making the decision that you want to be booked on other shows so are things like pre covid going okay for you or yeah. So in terms of like live, my live stuff, yeah, it was really just starting to really get going. Like I was, you know, doing shows almost every night of the week. Um, and that was really good because I kind of just, you know, built my network, was just grinding and met a lot of really cool people. Um, and then, I, you know, people would see me on one show, book me on another. I had my own show, um, shows. And so that was... Um, that was going pretty strong. And but then the pandemic hit and, and, you know, obviously that all stopped immediately, you know, New York was famously hit really hard. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah. And, and it's funny now things are just starting to open back up in New York and now I'm starting to get booked on live shows again, which is funny. I'm like, just now, you know, I really, I, I was just in Florida. I did a show in Tampa. I got a show on Saturday and I got like? a few shows in July, <laughs> Tampa. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So, I mean, it, it was interesting, like, because, I mean, a, a, not many of the people there, it was at a comedy club, uh, and I was opening up for, like, stand-ups, and a lot of the people there, um, some of them actually, and it turns out, knew who I was, but most of them didn't. It was an older crowd. It was a Florida, Tampa crowd. And I think it went well, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it just, it's like, I, I am doing something a little different. And so. <laughs> Dude, I can't yeah. even imagine, man. You're doing the kid yeah. with no fun in front of a 75-year-old grandma. It's probably, what the right. fuck? So, I mean, I was, I didn't even do that because I've never done that live. That was a character I created during the pandemic. So I've never actually brought that on stage. So these were like some of my old stuff, um, like the musical stuff. And yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, I'd love, I'd love to be able to, you know, have, my goal is always to like make it so that everyone can enjoy what I'm doing and laugh. And I, I cause I really don't like when people are like snotty and snobby and are like, you know, they're like, Oh, you know, if they don't laugh, then they're stupid and they don't get what I'm doing because I'm a genius. Like, blah, blah, blah. I don't really like that. I, but on the other hand, you know, there's only so much that a, you know, like 70 year old guy from Tampa is going to get about what I'm doing. So I have to be a little bit easy on myself with when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> How about them dentures? 
right. <laughs> now, um, so you never really had, it just sounds like you never really had a, a phase where you were like a struggling comedian. You were just always like working in the day, grinding in the night. Like there were never like super desperate moments for you. No, no. Cause I always just had jobs. I always just had jobs. Um, and yeah. And, and I never, I mean, I guess I was lucky in that I found jobs that worked for what I was trying to do. Um, and yeah, but I never, I never was really like desperate in that way. Now, did you expect like, I mean, obviously everyone wants their career to grow. Everyone wants to be successful, but did you expect, how old are you now? Like 27, 28? I'm 28. Yeah. Yeah. Did you expect at 28? You're like, okay, I think my career is going to be in a much better place at this point. I had no, I mean, it depends on what you ask me. Like, you know, when I moved to New York, I kind of knew that I didn't know anything. And so I was like, I don't know if I should expect to have some sort of success at 25, 30, 40. I had no clue. So I was just kind of taking it one step at a time, like trying to, you know, do a little better, do a little better, do a little better. Kind of, you know, I had a big, you know, I had big long term goals, but I really focused on my short term goals. And um, so I guess, I guess in the back of my mind, I always had 30 as a big number of like, you know, if things are really not progressing by the time I turn 30, maybe it's a time to like do some self-reflection and think about what, you know, I want to do with my life. But what would you um, do, man? What? What would you do if you had to give up comedy? So that's the thing I always said is like, I never would have given it up. I always, I, you know, I genuinely enjoy performing. Um, I genuinely enjoy making funny stuff. That's just like what I like to do. So I never, I mean, it's just what I do. So I never would have stopped, but I think I just would have transitioned to focusing and spending more time on um, my career outside of comedy. It just would have taken up more time and, but I never would have stopped. So like you would want to be like a, a cloud salesman for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the, yeah. It was like, you know, I, you know, I had that big moment where I was like, I have such a passion for software sales, but <laughs> you know, this comedy thing is calling to me, you know, it was a really hard decision. <laughs> Dude, holy shit. Now. Um, so now that the world's like reopening, are you just kind of leveraging the TikTok following with a lot of the bookings? So I think it's probably, I mean, I, it is, and I think will continue to make it much easier. Um, and it's just, a, I mean, I'm still figuring out, look, look, I, I really, really enjoy doing the TikTok because for many reasons, like it's just, it's fun to do. It's fun to write. I have the complete control. I don't answer to anyone. Like, you know, no one's giving me notes on what they think, you know, like, change this, change that. Um, so I really have no plans to stop doing it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm just going to try to keep seeing, you know, what life is life with the live bookings and do more live shows. Cause I genuinely love doing that too. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just going to try to do, my goal is just, just to do as much as possible of all of it. Dude. I think you're headed for great stuff, man. Oh, man. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, are, are there any characters that you've cooked up that, like, you haven't dropped yet? Yeah, I can. Let me pull up. Uh, let me pull up my notes. So a little peek behind the curtain of my process. Um, I so what I do is, like, I have this note on my phone called new characters. And if you can see. Damn, that know. bitch is dense, brother. For anyone yeah, who's boom, 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 boom. my yeah, boy Kyle like, wrote the Odyssey in the, in the notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what I'll do throughout the day is like if I have a, like a kernel of an idea, I'll I'll uh, write it down, and then I'll like try to write every every day, almost every day, and like I'll take the I I'll go through a lot of these are garbage because it's just like fleeting thoughts I have throughout the day. I'll try to sort through the ones that I like that are good. Then I'll take that one and then just write by hand, you know, some like lines of dialogue or things that this character might say. 
And then when I'm ready to shoot it, I'll, you know, trim that down to like the best lines. So let me uh, look through and see um, uh, uh, some, some ideas that I have. So this one I think might be good. Um, I want to do like uh, an older kid giving advice to a younger kid on like how to get chicks. Um, so it's like, but it's like a 12 year old giving advice to a 10 year old or like a 14 year old and <laughs> giving advice to it. So it's like, uh, and it's just the advice is really bad. So it's like, um, you know, like insult her, man. Like you got it. Just don't like, whatever. I, I haven't written it obviously, but like, you gotta uh, be a you know, dickhead. Like, yeah. 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 Like terrible ad, uh, advice from like a 14 year old to like an 11 year old. Um, <laughs> then, uh, really yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. It's sort of similar. Uh, now that I can see I'm going through these for the first time like this um i i like especially in movies there's always this trope of like the guy who's trying to help a friend get over a breakup um in like a bro way so it's like dude it's six months man you got to get out there and get some pussy like you know <laughs> like i'm gonna get you late tonight no matter what and, like the guy who's like and the guy's really sad he's like not over his girlfriend or like you know like dude, we're going to go through your apartment and destroy everything that reminds you of her. Burn that, you know, like hose or whatever, you know, whatever. Dude, I'll, um, I'll give you three, I'll give you three references right now. Fucking whoever Rob Corddry plays with that in that Vince Vaughn movie where they break up, split the apartment. Also a Matthew McConaughey movie oh, yeah. when he breaks up with his girl right at the start. And then a uh, 40 year old virgin. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, 40 year old virgin is a big one. Um, what was I just watching? I, cause I, I reminded me of it. Oh, I was, I recently randomly with my girlfriend, we watched the first um, Harold and Kumar. And okay. uh, there was like a brief scene at the beginning where that like, they, they dump all the work on Harold. And, they, but they, it's because this one guy's like, dude, fuck your work, man. I'm going to get you laid tonight. You have to get over this girl, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and so, yeah, that was, that was kind of the inspiration for that. Dude, I um, thought your, your impression of the graduation speech was so spot on. Holy shit. Uh, it's like, here are three things I learned. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like these, like, totally indecipherable, like, inside jokes from the college. Well, that was, that was because my sister just graduated. So I was at her graduation, and I was like, oh, this is <laughs> uh, Yeah, I do that. That shit was so spot on. Um, well, dude, I had a great time, man. Yeah, thank you so much. A um, couple things. Number one. The real reason I want to meet you today is because I think I'm going to make another movie and I'm going to write a part for you. Oh, say the word. Thanks, man. We're, we're going to get you in it. So we That's end the amazing. show with two things. And dude, I would love to get a hold of your, your gig schedule in New York because I should be there next month. I'd love to see a show. Yeah, well, actually, perfect timing because I next month is when it really starts. I've just like got a full, you know, it's really kicking into gear next month. So um, it's actually all on my website, but I can, I can send you that page with, I post, I'm pretty good at keeping um, the like upcoming events page updated. So I, I can send that to you. Cool. And also, I don't know, I think we had talked about this on the phone. I don't know if you do collabs, but I have a bunch of friends who have pretty sizable followings on TikTok. So I can link you up. No problem. I'll, I'll shoot you their pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. This is how we start and end the show. Actually, uh-huh. first, one ending bit. I'm premiering my movie all over Boston. It's going to be online sometime in the next, I'll, I'll safely say four months. Mm-hmm. When it's done, all I ask is you and your girlfriend just sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, done. Done deal. All right. all right, sweet. You're the man. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to say it once. Do not fuck it up. <laughs> you got to say, this is how we start and end the show. A little post-production, pre-production. You say, hi your name, and this is my golden hour, directly after no break in between the start and the finish, hi, your name, and that was my golden hour. Got it. All right, ready? Ready to go. Hi, this is Kyle Gordon, and this is my golden hour. Hi, this is Kyle Gordon, that was my golden hour. Hi. It's good. Hi. Hey. Hi, my name is Molly Walsh. Hi, I'm Becca Peasy. Hi, I'm James Self. And this is my golden hour. And this is my golden hour. And this is my golden hour. And this is my golden hour.